Alright guys, for today's video, we're going to talk about my Veronica ETRS. It's a medium format, 6x4.5 camera. I got this, I think I got this about a year ago. I was shooting a Mamiya RB67 for a while. Love that 6x7 negative, it's huge. I kind of made a mistake by selling that to get this. That thing is so heavy to carry around everywhere. I needed something smaller, like more compact, would fit in a camera bag because that RB67 just doesn't fit anywhere. You kind of just have to like carry it with you. I ended up getting this off of I think Craigslist. I ended up trading my RB for this and got some cash for it because I had, my RB was pretty pimped out. It was a great camera. Yeah, I want to change the film in this, uh, put some tri in it. We'll go take some photos and then I'll show them on here. First, I just wanted to give a rundown of this camera. Medium format, 6x4.5. It's got a waist level viewfinder. Um, and then you got the interchangeable film back right here. Holds 120. I think you can get a 35 millimeter back and a 220 back along with a Polaroid back, but I don't mess with the Polaroid backs ever since the Fuji film FP film's gone. I just don't. There's no sense in spending $40 on a pack of that. But uh, the shutter speed, the shutter knob's right here. It goes from 1 500th of a second all the way to 8 seconds. Kind of, it makes me a little upset that there's not a bulb mode for those like super duper long exposures. I always like to have bulb, but 8 seconds is is good but sometimes you want to do like two minutes can't do it with this camera it i believe this is the kit lens it's the 75 millimeter zenzanon it's got a nice little you know focus focus wheel here whatever you want to call that focus crank the lens is a 2.8 which is awesome but i did just order an orange filter for this but uh yeah when you don't have the lens hood on it this thing looks like a little baby i mean it's just a very very tiny camera I was actually really surprised because all the pictures I saw of it, it looks looks rather big in the pictures. And then when I got it in my hands, I was I was very happy, don't get me wrong, because carrying the RB67 around is like carrying a small child. And then carrying this is just kind of like every other camera that you carry around. It's it's not heavy at all. It's got this big lens hood with it which is great, makes it look fancy. And then on this side, you got your uh, film advance reel right here, crank it. I have it on lock, so it's not moving. I do have a prism viewfinder, but I never use it. I don't, I don't like it. I feel weird holding this thing all the way up to my face. It's, uh, you know, these cameras are kind of meant to shoot waist level. I do miss the rotating back of the Mamiya. Because, you know, everything I'm shooting landscape, every shot I shoot is landscape. <clears throat> there is no meter in this, which is which is okay. When I'm shooting Tri-X, I kind of know. I don't really have to think about metering with Tri-X unless I really want to get it dead on. Since I am getting that orange filter, I am going to start pushing it to 1600. Especially because the days are getting shorter now and I'm going to need that extra bit of play on light. Uh, that's another thing I had to get used to uh, real quick is when... Uh, when you load the back, you have 15 shots instead of 10. So that's that's pretty cool. You get a five extra shots. The, the you know the the negatives are small, but they scan really nice. Six x four five kind of. This is the first six x four five camera I've had. I have six x six, and then like I said, I had the six x seven. So six x four five reminds me of 35 millimeter a lot which also kind of bums me out. So I think at some point I'm gonna try to sell this one again and try to get another RB or an RZ. I'd really like to get an RZ67 because they're definitely newer and, you know, better built, but they're definitely, there's a price that comes along with that. So we'll see. Let's put some film in this and uh, we'll go out and shoot a couple pictures. It being November the 3rd, it is so hot outside. I think they said it's 80, 80 degrees out today. And of course I forgot my phone when I left the house, so I had to run all the way back and get it. I'm down here at the railroad tracks. Uh, I loaded that Tri-X 400. We're gonna take some photos. I'm gonna try to shoot as many as I can while I'm out here right now. Try to make the best of what I got. And then uh, I'll try to finish this roll off tonight at the laundromat. <laughs>
All right, guys, I'm going to call it there with the walking and shooting. So when I get home, I have a couple more things that I want to go over with the camera that I forgot about earlier when we were in my office. Man, that was a lot of fun. Only bad or downside of the whole thing was how sweaty I got. And then I also broke my vlogging camera. Man, the back, for some reason, that little tiny chip is totally destroyed the LCD. So I can't see anything anymore. I mean, it still works. It still records, but that's quite the bummer. All right, I'll see you when I get home. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up this video on the Veronica ETRS. Got done developing two rolls. I ended up going downtown and shooting another roll of HP5 that I had. It was my last roll that I had left, so I, I just didn't feel like I, you know, gave all I could give with that roll of film just walking around the woods and stuff, especially after, you know, reviewing the, the video and stuff like that. I just thought I should have some like city setting or town setting photographs with some people in it and stuff like that. So I'm going to put those at the end of this video along with the shots from Pinkerton. Just a couple things that I forgot to mention about this that I wanted to when I first opened up this video. The camera, it fires on an electric shutter. So it it does use a battery. It's a very common battery. You can find it at, you know, Kroger or whatever grocery store is near you, I'm sure. Or the 28L. So very easy to find. You can definitely find them on Amazon or eBay or any sort of battery website. Eight to 10 bucks, usually. I also did a little bit of research on eBay. This is as of like November 2016, what they're going for on eBay. You can find ones in relatively good condition between the 200, 300 realm. And then there's like kits with an, an extra lens and stuff like that you can get on eBay also in the two to four hundred dollar range so if you're looking to get one of these ebay has them anywhere between i saw one for 179 but i'm sure you can find these cheap places you know or find them on craigslist or something that's where i found mine b h had them they're not b h k e h they didn't have any kits together but k e h had the body which just a bare body no viewfinder or anything on it for 84 dollars the kit lens is 64 dollars and to get extra backs are in the $60 range. But I also looked on eBay and you can get extra backs for about 20 bucks. They're also a little beat up, but you know, 20 bucks isn't bad compared to spending 65 on one through KEH. I always found that KEH is a little expensive, but you know, their gear's tested rather than getting the eBay curse where you have no idea what you're getting. So yeah, that's, uh, let's take a look at these photos. I hope you guys enjoy them. Leave me a comment. Let me know your overall thoughts of the of the camera itself. I'm probably going to do an instant film camera for my next review. I also have a what's in my bag video planned. Those are usually good and fun. I know I get stuck on YouTube watching those. So um, until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Leave me a comment.